let's scoot over to HIE drivers, challenges, and trends. So from a driver's perspective, there's a sampling of some of the drivers. It certainly isn't all of them, but uh, you know, if you want to receive incentive payments, you need to align to meaningful use objectives and the certification criteria. Uh, it's certainly been the biggest driver in the market. Meaningful Use 2 has got a big HIE requirement for some of the objectives, so that's a big driver out there. Um, ONC grant funding to promote adoption of HIE and EHRs. A lot of grant funding over the last couple of years, the RECs, uh, the state HIE program, and then the Beacon communities were certainly big pots of money that motivated a lot of activity in the market. Um, there's also new shared risk and shared reward healthcare reimbursement models that require the sharing of data. This is something that most of you, I suspect, are, are quite intimately aware of. And then there's a lot of the patient safety concerns. So this is a study from 2004 funded by the Commonwealth Fund and conducted out of Duke entitled Electronic Medical Records, Getting It Right and Going to Scale. Uh, where they cite a number of examples where the lack of information leads to patient safety or care coordination concerns. Um, so the first one there, physicians sharing the same patient ordered duplicate tests and therapies. The same drug in radiology exam were ordered 11% of the time. Uh, physicians did not know what other physicians were doing to their patients. Uh, they say that primary care physicians were not aware of one of four prescriptions taken by patients and uncertainty and hassle drove uh, a lot of decisions out there. So that last sentence, one in five lab and x-ray tests were duplicates because of retrieval barriers. So presumably making information more available at the point of care could reduce some of these, uh, some of these findings. And then we have a number of drivers here locally in Massachusetts. So I'm sure everyone's familiar with the 2017 mandate that's out there where it says all providers able to access an EHR network through the statewide HIE. I suspect that's certainly motivating some activity. And then Chapter 224, Cost Containment Provisions. This is actually a graphic that comes out of the 2013 Mass Cost Trends Report uh, published by the Health Policy Commission. And they basically show that Massachusetts is a big spender of healthcare. Uh, I suspect many, many of us knew that. We're actually number one in the nation for per capita spending roughly 36% above the national average. So they did a deeper analysis to understand some of the, the inefficiencies that may be present in that $9,200. And they came up with five categories uh, of, um, that are contributed to wasteful spending here in Massachusetts. Now HIE certainly can't address all of them, but we suspect for that failures of care coordination, there's really an opportunity for HIE to come in and do some effort, and I suspect is driving some of that activity. So if you read the description of avoidable spending due to communication failures and lack of care integration across settings, resulting in roughly $700 million in avoidable spending. So certainly a, a nice opportunity there. Um, the need for HIE is clear, um, but it's not a smooth road ahead. So um, many of you know Mickey Trapassi. He's the CAO Mass eHealth Collaborative. He did a nice interview where he described that workflow and ecosystem maturity are the biggest challenges to meeting the transition of care and view download transmit objectives of meaningful use two. Uh, two of the you know, roughly six groupings of objectives with an HIE component. While organizations are gaining great experience connecting to HIEs, there really remains little implementation guidance. Uh, frequently the documentation lags product availability. You know, well-funded HIEs in the days of the ONC grants they could get by without the well-defined value proposition, but now that we're in the area of sustainability, a solid value proposition is an imperative. Uh, is the value the HIE proposes more than the effort and funding required to change workflows, build technical connections, and invest in staffing resources? From a HIST perspective, uh, getting different secure networks to talk to one another, is, it's a hard nut to crack. Um, working then uh, to be able to share directories certainly further complicates the problem. And these are some pretty big prevalent issues that we're working through right now. Uh, as we advance toward interoperability, ensuring exchange data is usable by the receiver is certainly a big deal. And, and I love this quote, you can't draw a border and say patients stop here. This was from Dr. Overage, who's the uh, chief medical information uh, informatics officer at Siemens, where he's describing how HIEs frequently are forced to end at state borders. 
there was a study put out by the eHealth Institute back in 2013, uh, last year, where they talked about a number of the challenges they see in the market. Here's just a couple of them. Um, interoperability, you know, clearly getting to interoperability without the steep interface costs and making it more plug and play is of interest. You know, financial sustainability, there's still this big tension between public and private financing and finding that right, that right balance for sustainability. A lot of competitive exchanges, uh, a lot of competitive concerns exist out there. This idea of um, exchanges uh, frequently are limited to exchange within an organization and their affiliates. Much fewer exchanging with external organizations or unaffiliated organizations. And then finally, patient engagement certainly remains low across the board. So from a trends perspective, uh, from exchange to interoperability, interoperability being transport, content, vocabulary code sets, you know, the F9 initiative has uh, been diligently working to ensure we're not just moving data around, but we're trending toward creating interoperable solutions. Uh, there's a lot of effort being put into transitioning from fee-for-service to value-based payment models. Uh, this move of quality over quantity translates into participation incentive programs like, oh, like Meaningful Use, like ACOs, uh, patient-centered medical homes. And the success of these new payment and delivery models depends on their capability to gather and analyze clinical and claims data, report on quality measures, and provide actionable information in support of improving care and outcomes for individual populations. You know, there's this uh, another trend that, that's perhaps not as positive, but it's, it's an upward trend, is that adoption of EHRs certainly is outpacing HIE adoption. HIEs went from 14% back in 2010 to 30% in 2012 to 41% today, whereas EHRs moved from 19% to 2010 to 56% in 2012, and we're now over 78% adoption of EHRs nationally. And if you haven't felt it yet, consumers are coming. So in this the Deloitte study, they described uh, that the majority of consumers really want access to tools, websites and rankings, patients' reviews of doctors and hospitals. You know, patients now routinely ask, do you have an EHR? May they soon ask, are you connected to an HIE? So let's end here with um, more about what's ahead. You know, HIEs are going to get easier. Uh, I feel quite confident. I'm living in this world, and just in the last two years that I've been working on this, I've, I've seen a, a uh, a lot of learning go on. So EHRs are certainly starting to get there. The experience in the market is growing. Trust is being established, which is going to open all kinds of uh, pathways for information exchange. As more organizations uh, join HIEs and more information is exchanged and more use cases are born, the value of the exchanges will continue to grow. IOM recently published their recommended domains of social and behavioral data to facilitate organized capture in EHRs. Uh, there's, there's clearly this, um, you know, this thirst for this type of data among providers. And with the new recommendations from the Privacy and Security Tiger team, I think this came out yesterday or the day before, to tag such data to enable deeper data segmentation of EHR data, uh, this may soon come to pass. And then how do you analyze data sets that are not aggregated in one location? This concept of distributed analytics allowing for kind of federated queries is certainly being considered. And then finally, interoperability. ONC um, released their 10-year their vision for interoperability where they described the health IT ecosystem. Um, they painted a nice vision for interoperability, offered some guidance or guiding principles and agendas for kind of the three, six, and 10-year marks, ultimately evolving the nation into this, this learning health system. And they also offered a number of uh, building blocks to really getting us there. And this is kind of a transition to our guest speakers. Uh, this is uh, kind of the, the final trend out there. But they, you know, they, they really reflect uh, this trend of the rise of private HIEs. So in general, private funded HIEs are growing at a much faster rate than publicly funded ones. From 2010 to 11, the number of pu live public exchanges doubled from 37 to 67, whereas the number of private exchanges tripled from 52 to, uh, to, to 161, so pretty significant increase, and certainly um, a topic that we want to learn more about. 